Praise Jesus. Scotty is going to talk tonight. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the calling that you have on our lives. I would not have called myself up here. But you did. And here I am. Father, I pray that you would help us to remember that we are to be your willing vessels so that you can use us to move and to shape this world, Lord. We're the movers and shakers. I pray, Father, that you meet me right now as, you, as I speak, Lord, that you would have your way. Your word would come out, not mine. Father, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the hearts here tonight. I pray that your message would flow forth, would touch the hearts of those who are here and anybody outside who is hearing your word, Lord, that we would leave never the same, encouraged and challenged by the Spirit of God. We love you and thank you. We ask these things with expectation because we're your children and we can. In and through the name above all names, the name of your Son, our Lord, our Savior, the King Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. So the question on the floor is, who are you? Who am I? Am I a former this or a former that? Am I the mistake that I made? How about you guys? Do you ever see yourself as the mistake that you made? Oh, man. That one time when I did this and I chose that. And nobody else remembers it but us. And it changes the way we see ourselves. So we have the world, we have society telling us what we should be, who we are, who we, who we aren't. We have culture telling us. Bro, we even get our families sometimes saying little things, little suggestions. Not intentionally always, but nonetheless, it's there. So we got the world, yeah, our culture, our society, even our families sometimes, those closest to us. That sometimes we forget, or maybe we don't even know what it is that God says about us. Who are you? That's the question. Take a couple seconds and think about that. Who am I? What am I about? Here's the next question. If you're accused of being a Christian, would there be enough evidence for a conviction? When people see you, do they say, whoa? Something about that guy something about that girl something different the Bible says a believer is a peculiar people if we're not peculiar if we're not sticking out like a, like a sore thumb am I a Christian am I a follower or am I a sayer do I say I'm a Christian do I say that I know God well you know what news flash demons believe and they tremble because although they believe they know their destination and it ain't in the kingdom of heaven so that's the question would there be enough evidence to convict us to convict you to convict me 
God, I hope so. Yeah, Uncle Scotty, glasses now. The Bible says that we are the prophet, priest, and king. Wait, wait, wait. Me? A prophet, a priest, and a king? No, not me. You don't know the things in my life, the things that I've done. Praise God again. One of the best parts <clears throat> that I <clears throat> love about the word is there's a few places where it says, but God. Yeah, you were like this, you did this, you did that. You lived like this and you lived like that. But God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 5, 17, you are a new creation. It says if anyone is in Christ, if anyone's a believer, if you made the choice, if you made the transaction, like you went to the store, you go to the store, you see something you need, you got to buy groceries or whatever. You pick it up, you take it to the register. And you purchase it. It's a, a redemption. When somebody buys something, they're going to get what they're paying for. You go to the store, you pay for something, you're going to take it home with you. On the cross over 2,000 years ago, Jesus paid the price for you. And if you made that choice, if you made that transaction for, for Jesus, he said, I, I surrender, I give up who I am because I know it's not taking me anywhere but down real quick. And you choose Jesus, take my hand, I give up, I want you in my life, I surrender. And he takes your hand because you mean it. The Bible says that if you believe, and you if you believe, you're saved. Romans 10, 9 and 10 talks about that. So who am I in Christ? You guys got to know. It's super important that you guys know who you are in Christ. Because once you become a believer, you're in a war. And, and maybe you don't know it, but we're in a war. And the enemy of our soul, he's going to try and break us. He's going to try and discourage us. He's going to try and distract us. Why? So that we become insignificant in the kingdom of God. Imagine that, having the power of God indwelling you. Bro, we get power. Right in this room, we have power to change our community. You encourage, you love one person, somebody on the street, who may be ashamed, who may feel guilty, who's got past hurts and just broken, and that little word of encouragement, just that smile, just eye contact, stirs something up in them, draws them, and it's all that person may even need, just that little encouragement, and that person encourages somebody else. Bro, we change Hilo. How many people you guys come in contact with every day? And I come in contact with plenty of people. I make it a point for people to know that I, I believe in the Bible. I love Jesus. Because people know me. But you know, there's a lot of people that I don't know, that, that you guys know, and vice versa. But like I said, in this room, we got power to change Hilo forever.
I forget my Bible up there. So in Christ, the biggest thing is that you accepted everything you've gone through that may make you feel insignificant and small. Jesus accepts you. No need to be pretty. It can be ugly. It can be bust up. It can be sore. I don't know about you guys, but I, I struggle, I hurt. I feel shame sometimes, like, wow, I'm Christian, and I thought like this. Or somebody drove in front of me, and whatever, and what a nerve. I feel shame sometimes. I don't know if you guys ever feel like that. Like, I could have made a better choice. Why do I think the thoughts I think? Nevertheless, you're accepted. That's big, you know. No matter what it is, you accept it. Romans 5.1 says that you are justified. So we accept it. We're justified. The Bible also talks about how God wants us. Just because he wants something doesn't mean God gets it because he gave us free will but he wants and it's a strong want it's a calling want he's calling because he just wants you he wants me he wants all of it he doesn't want part of me he doesn't want part of you he wants it all because when God has it all the beauty, the thing that he can do. And then going back to 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, talks about being bought with a price. Again, if you belong to Christ, He's coming back for you. And so this is the time. Because we know He's coming back. And He's coming back for me. Does He want me hanging on to my past and dragging my feet and struggling and hurting and feeling bad about myself? That's his plan. Not for us to live in defeat, but to have a, a pep in your step. To live in victory. I know who I am. I mentioned this before, but what do, what do you call the son of a king? What, what is his title? He's a prince. How about a daughter? Princess. Prince and a princess carries authority, but they carry responsibility. So we walk, not arrogantly, but we walk as prince, princes, and princesses. Because we walk in victory. But we, we walk in kindness, we walk in love, mercy, grace. Because that's what our Father does. God, He's so merciful and graceful. For a knucklehead like me in the past, woohoo! It's like in good fun being on Christian. Because we get to see firsthand 
what God is doing individually in each other. I love testimonies. When somebody comes up and gives their testimony about their struggle, about how God brought them through something, I, I cannot wait for Sundays. I cannot wait through, throughout the week just for other people, Christians, to say, this is what happened, this is what God did, and God, that encourages me. How about this one? Genesis 1, 26. He was made in the image of and after the likeness of God. So we're made after the image. And after the likeness of God. He puts a desire. He puts a want in us. To want to do his good pleasure. To want to do his will. That's where it gets real exciting. When you start wanting to do it and you step out and you do it. Because it's the right thing to do and because it's what God says to do. In human terms, it's like magical. Because you get to see God move through you. You may not see it today. You may not see it tomorrow. But when you do see it, it's so much more full than the thing you, you asked for in the first place, than the thing that you were thinking of, that, wow, it'd be so great for this to happen. When it does happen, it's so much more better. You ask for the car. When God delivers the car, he doesn't only deliver the car, he, he gives you the garage. He gives you the gas card. He hook you up. The Bible says that we're complete. Upon receiving the Spirit of God through salvation, the Bible says we're complete. But we still grow. We still got to grow. He's going to grow us. But we're already complete. Wait, what does that mean? If, if I'm complete, then why do I have to grow? Just like a child, we eat, we get more information through the ones that want to inform us, in this case God, and he feeds us, and he nurtures, and he encourages, and he picks us up. Oh, okay, come here, come here, come here. That's who he is, and he builds us up. I love this. <laughs> Ephesians 2.10 talks about we are his workmanship. That means we're the crowning achievement. We're the best thing he made. You guys saw the, the weather this past couple days, how beautiful it is, the paintings. How he paints the skies, how he paints the ocean, and it's all in movement. How beautiful, and yet we, mankind, is his crowning achievement. A special, you guys special, bro, I'm special. So we were accepted. And then in Hebrews 13, 5, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So I'm accepted. Now I'm secure. He never going to leave. My parents divorced when I was seven. To see my dad go one way and my mom go the other. Brad, I was heartbreaking. So I had a fear of people leaving. Never wanted to experience that fear. 
So I tried to keep people. You can come over here, but, but you cannot come this close. You can come around, but I'm going to keep you right here. Because you're not going to hurt me. So digest that. The king. The one who can love you better than your mom, better than your dad. Just passionately chasing you down because you're that special and because he loves you that much. He'll never leave you or forsake you. So I'm secure. I'm secure that my past isn't going to be brought up by God. There's n therefore, there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. He paid it all. We're free from that. We're secure. Philippians 3.20 calls us citizens of heaven. We're just passing through here. But he has a work for us while we're passing through here. So it goes back to we're princes, we're princesses, we've got respons responsibility. But it's exciting because we're royalty and we have victory. Dakota, can you get, get First John five eighteen, please? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Who was that that was born of God? The Christ. And He protects us. That's security. Thanks, bro. How about this? You guys ever felt like you wouldn't be able to make a difference in something no matter how hard I try I just can't seem to make a difference in this how about with the coronavirus or whatever you know getting people telling me that I can't breathe without a mask oppression by, uh, by whatever And how about this? You guys ever felt like this? Uh, life's just going to go the way it's going to go. You know, might as well just go with it because life is just going to go the way it's going to go. Nothing I can really do about it. Nothing anyone can really do about it. John 15 says that. You are chosen. Chosen for what? To bear fruit. So if God says that I chose you to bear fruit, He's not saying, ah, uh, you know, maybe you can bear fruit. If God said that I chose you to bear fruit, you're going to bear fruit. If you if you walk in and you're living for Him, you go and bear fruit. And that's the fruit that changes lives. That's the, the, the thing that, that blesses God.
So yeah, you're significant. You mean something. You matter. I felt like I, I couldn't make one difference. I felt like I didn't matter. Not anymore. And I know I matter. I know. I just finished a 20-year prison term. And for me to say that I know I matter, that God can use me and make a difference, that's big. Because I'm convinced he showed me his hand. He's moved, and I know that he's moved in your guys' lives, and you've seen him move. Remember that prayer that you prayed? And you prayed, and you prayed, and you prayed. God, how come you're not moving? I'm praying. I'm begging. How come you're not moving? And then after you cool off, a week, a month, a year down the road, and he answers, wow. But that's how he is. in our significance with God in Ephesians 3.12 now I can come to him I can approach him the Bible says that you can approach him really like you guys dig in here gang know who you are make it a point make it a point to know who you are because it's amazing. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You're significant. Jesus said, I am the vine. You're my branches. What does the branch do? Produces fruit. And he's not just putting it out there for us to just think about. He puts it out there so we can act on it because he knows that when we act on it, we're going to see firsthand. So the point of this whole thing is now that we know who we are, we act on who you are. What did Peter Parker say? What would, um, his uncle said to him when great power comes with great power comes what? Great responsibility. We got the power of the universe. We got the power of the king of of the universe behind us does come with responsibility take a chance take a chance I know you guys some of you guys do step out in faith no matter what people may think about you I'm blessed why because I know who I am I'm a child of the king makes me a prince or a princess Ephesians 2.6 says that you're seated in heavenly places. Guess where God is? Guess where Jesus is? In the heavenly places. Wait, but I'm here. I'm on earth. Yeah? But the Bible says at the same time, we're seated in heavenly places. Which means you have a say. What are we going to say? You have something to do. What are we going to do? Now, 
when God saved you, like 36 things happen instantaneously. That's another time. We'll talk about that another time. But he seals us with the promise of the Holy Spirit. You know what a signet ring is? The kings had a signet ring that had their stamp on their ring. Only the king had the signet ring. And when he would send a letter to another king or to somebody else, they would melt wax and seal the envelope and he would stamp his signet, uh, his king's, his stamp on there and that would seal it. Anybody but the person who it's addressed to, open it, their history. But God sealed us with his signet ring upon salvation. So he gave us, he sealed us with the Holy Spirit who is the guarantee. He's coming back for us. He purchased us with the most expensive element ever, the blood of Jesus. The most costly thing. It was his son. He gave up his son so that we could live. I heard a story of a man who was sailing off the east coast took his son his son brought his best friend and they went out sailing and they were moving down the coast and the wind started picking up they didn't know but a storm just popped up and they got pulled out they tried taking down the, the sails but the wind was just pushing the boat the water was rough there was waves coming over the boat and a big rogue wave hit the boat and the son and the son's friend were both washed over only the man was left and so the boat righted itself he looked they were in the water but there was only one one buoy there's a two boys only one buoy the water is moving the wind is blowing the sky is gray and waves are coming and he has to make a, a choice right at that that second wave is coming he only has one buoy and he throws it the wave comes the boys are gone but the rope yanks and he pulls up the friend so when when the story was being told And the, the storyteller said, yeah, that the man chose to throw it to, the, to this young man who, instead of his son. Because his son was saved. His son was born again. He knew where the son was going. But the other boy wasn't. That's what our father did for us. He threw us the lifeline. And he let Jesus go down to hell for three days. Now, when Jesus was on the cross, the words he cried out before he died, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani? My God, why have you forsaken me? Because the king, the, the father, he's always known 
almighty God who was always with him. He was never, ever apart from God. He was always with God. He only knew that. But at that moment, when the sin of the world, your sin, my sin, came upon him, God, who is holy and just, couldn't have a part with that because he's holy and just. He can have no part with sin. And all the sin of the world came upon his son. Now his son, who's always known him, got this. He freaked. My God, why is thou forsaken me? Where are you? Where are you? Fear came in. Being apart from God, that's what people experience, is fear. That's who we were. But you are paid for. You are the purchased possession, and you're worth it. Because he said you're worth it. If he says you're worth it, if he says I'm worth it, we're worth it. Father, thank you. Thank you for the hearts of my brothers and sisters here. Thank you, Father, for the passion that you put into us to love you, to serve you, to be movers and shakers, Father, to step out because we're, we're victorious in you. We're your sons and daughters. We're princes and princesses. Father, help us to walk with that authority to walk with that passion that you have for others. To change this world. Because we have the ability. We're significant. We're accepted. God, we're so loved by you and we thank you. Pray that you would help us to remember the things that you teach us. That we would walk according to the way that you want us to walk. Again, we love you, we thank you. And then through the name above all names, we pray and ask these things. The name of your Son, our Lord, our Savior, the Christ Jesus, the King. Amen. Thanks, guys. I know who I am. I know who I am. I am yours. I am yours. That was great, huh? I wish all the youth in Hilo could have heard that message. I just wanted to share what God put in my heart was, um, you know, sometimes we feel like uh, the Lord has forsaken us and that um, in different situations and stuff, we might feel really alone. But the truth is nobody in the room would be here tonight if the Lord had forsaken you in those rough times. And even when we feel like we're forsaken, God was there. And uh, it probably won't be until you get to heaven where you're really going to see how he carried you through those rough times. But, um, but he's there all the time to carry us. So anyways, good words, Scotty. Thanks, you guys. Have a great night. We'll see you guys on Sunday morning at 9. Lord, you are my identity.